Hi everybody, my name is Barry Schwartz and this is the Search Buzz Video Recap. Today is Friday, August 18th and this is the search news we covered over at the Search Engine Roundtable, seroundtable.com, over the past week. First up, um, so I posted a little bit more details about that Google AdSense ad buyer exploit where Google said there were some irresponsible um, campaign parameters added by um, bad ad buyers that they ended up blacklisting. Um, Google said this is not true but Google won't tell us exactly what happened, of course, because they said they don't want other people to do it um, and they don't want people to figure out the, the spam and technique behind it. Um, but it does seem that some people were trying to figure out what happened and there's some type of theory here. I don't go through it in detail, but basically people basically putting in these irresponsible ad campaign parameters, making sure the destination URLs um, didn't work, but the display URLs were just making fake. Um, so it's not clear exactly what happened, but here's one theory um, that seemed to get a lot of attention. Um, it's not when it, we Google would not confirm that that's what exactly what happened. There's a lot of controversy over what John Mueller meant in a tweet specifically around um, black hat scrapers. Um, so John, let me just load it so you can see it. So here is John responding to a tweet saying, "Position change for numerous sites. Google results are shaking up." listed SEM Rush's new sensor tool, which is basically like MozCast or like uh, Alguru or any of those rank rangers, any of those tools that track the weather or the algorithm shifts in Google. And John responds to that saying, or maybe it's just black hat scrapers having a hard time. Some people are saying, hey, maybe Google penalized black hat scrapers and that's why the sh results are shifting around. But I really, really think, <laughs> I'm pretty good at this, I think, and Google, John, feel free to say I'm wrong. Um, that he's talking about the tools are black hat scrapers because those tools are specifically against Google's guidelines about automated queries. Google disallows that in their terms of service. They don't really do anything about it. They really, I think they only once or twice in their life actually went ahead and turned off tools for doing that on some level or blocked tools for doing that. They usually turn the blind eye to it. But I think John's response is basically saying, yeah, these black hat tools from Moz, from Rank Ranger, from Alguru, from the list goes on and on and on, are against Google's terms of service. And maybe they're having a hard time querying us because maybe we're doing something to them. Or maybe they're just black hat tools and you shouldn't trust them. I think that's what he's saying. Of course, there's a lot of comments and things about saying I'm wrong in terms of interpreting that. But I'm pretty sure I'm right there. So again, John can say I'm wrong if he wants. That's fine. Uh, I've been wrong plenty of times. Google confirmed, I guess, on some level, that their internal and external values of the way they actually look at those links are scored differently. Here's John's tweet again. A lot of John's tweets this week. Uh, Gary's off, off this week on vacation. Um, somebody asked, John, are there any differences between internal and external score juice strong calculation formulas? And John said, definitely, yeah. And of course, I mean, most SEOs feel that, yeah, internal links are scored differently than external links. You get a link from an external website that you do not control, it's probably worth more on some level than you linking to yourself on your own domain. Um, and of course, again, John answered that with one word, so it's of course not exactly so easy to fully understand what he's saying. Google's Search Console um, structured data reports are getting a little bit more data. Um, Elena actually found this and she posted this graphic showing that it's now showing page URL levels where it's actually showing the name, the price, all these different attributes are actually showing in the structured data report. I'm seeing it for the video markup, URL, name, and all this other stuff around it. So yeah, Google seems to be actually showing a little bit more data around structured data reports in the Google Search Console. Speaking about the Google Search Console, it seems like their search analytics data is a bit behind. Usually it's about two days behind, uh, but we're now about five days behind. The furthest I can go back right this minute at least is up to Sunday, which is five days from uh, five days in the past. Usually by now I should be able to go to the 16th um, of you know two days ago and I'm not able to do that. John Mueller confirmed the issue saying things are a bit slower, more delayed than usual at the moment. Hopefully back to up back up to speed in a couple days. Sorry for delay. So hopefully by early next week we'll see Google Search Console data back up in terms of that data. Um, Google sent out via Google Search Console email notifications to webmasters and site owners that have um, forms, either login forms, any, for, any form data that people actually could submit 
done over HTTP and not HTTPS, saying you will be labeled in Chrome 62 starting in October as not secure. And this is something Google warned us about back in April. And this is the grid in terms of who and what the label will be. But basically, when you're entering data, you will be labeled as not secure on incognito mode, ins outside incognito mode. But incognito mode, it would actually go ahead and do it on page load. And when you start entering data, it's actually going ahead on not secure. It's very interesting to see that um, and so forth. But Google actually sent out tons of notifications to tons of webmasters last night via Google Search Console. So a lot of people are talking about it now. John Mueller answered on Twitter, how or actually not on Twitter, on Google Plus, how you can go ahead and properly block your staging server, your development server, your test server, whatever you want to call it, from being indexed by Google. And John went through on a Google Plus, uh, Google Plus post the different ways of doing that. He prefers doing it at the uh, at the uh, I guess the high level where um, specifically you want to go ahead and. Uh, block it using HTTPS, HTTP authentication or IP whitelisting. So don't let even Google get close to it. Make sure they have to enter a password to get to it or make sure they're just completely blocked. Um, you don't want Google to actually access it. And when you do access it and you want to remove it, obviously you need to go to Google Search Console, use the remove uh, tool, which means Google's going to have access to it, and then eventually block it. Um, so that's that. And definitely read that if you're nervous about it. This is not the first time Google has talked about that topic. Google says they do care about the last modification uh, date um, and URL, uh, specifically saying that um, they do look at the URL plus last modification date is what we care about in web search. Um, when somebody was asking about site priority field in XML sitemaps, Google said we ignore that. Google in the past has actually said they really ignore the last modification date in XML sitemaps. So I'm a little bit con uh, confused by that. John has not really confirmed um, what they said historically versus what they're saying now to be as true. Google said the URL structure is not so important for SEOs, and you have to understand what that means um, in context. And John said structure, well, here's the question. How important is URL structure, URL flat structure, uh, structure uh, URL structure flat versus subfolders, and what would be the minimal imp impact, impact, I guess, impact of changing URLs? And John responded structure not so much, one out of seven he ranked it. Uh, but all URL changes take time and can be painful. Choose and keep on for the long run. Again, it's not about how long URLs or how many slashes you have in them because most sites are dynamic these days. And URL structure doesn't really mean much to Google because if you basically Google wants to see links and find those links. So if you have those links in your homepage, they're not so deep on your site. Obviously, that matters. The deeper they are within your site and the harder they are to find it within your site, the more you're relying on Google XML sitemaps. Um, and the more you're relying on links that are, link data that Google doesn't have access to, that is the issue, in my opinion. Sorry, skip one. Um, Google listed three reasons why your rich snippets might not show up in search, and he did this on Twitter very, very nicely. Um, and he said on Twitter, they're either technically incorrect, obviously using. Um, different information, not compliant with their policies or their general quality issues with your site. And if any of those are the cases, then Google will not go ahead and show your rich snippets. Google also said you have more control when you use markup in code versus using the data highlighter tool for your structured data. So definitely try to use um, code when marking up your content, not the data highlighter, but it is there and they both work. On that topic, Google also said that they are equivalent. The on, using on-page markup versus uh, data highlighter, Google trusts them just the same. So if you're using both and they conflict, it's the same as, you, as having conflicting information directly um, using markup. So make sure you stick with one way and keep it and keep it consistent throughout your website. And don't ma make sure the markup versus the hi data highlighter don't conflict at all. And if it was me, I would just use with I would just do on-page code as the t as opposed to using data highlighter. Google said directing users, and of course, Googlebot to faster servers is not cloaking. Really, cloaking is only about when you serve different information to different to users versus Google, and that's what cloaking is. So, if you're serving a uh, bunny rabbit to to users, and you're serving a dog to Googlebot on the same page, that is cloaking by definition. Not serving a faster server because Google you Google wants the fastest possible content. Of course, you should you should load balance and do different things to get the fastest servers as possible for your users and for Googlebot. 
Google said they, this is an inter interesting little sitemap detail, um, that they will count the same URL differently in separate sitemaps. And that's why you might have a case where you have the number of submitted URLs, 34, actually be more less than the number of index URLs. Because it usually doesn't make sense. But if you have two different sitemaps with overlapping URLs, Google will double count those URLs in this um, result. Google is potentially uh, probably showing more local packs internationally. According to Rank Ranger and their scraper tool, <laughs> they are showing it much more likely in outside of the US. So it's actually an increase in the number of local packs that are being shown drastically outside of the US, which is a, a good thing, I think. Uh, Google Maps reviews, the ability to write reviews went offline for four hours on Wednesday. It made, it made I guess, a bunch of local SEOs and I guess a bunch of people who spam reviews go nuts. I'm almost done. Google launched their Q&A feature uh, for Android um, in local results. So if you have a local thing and you want to actually do a Q&A, you could actually use it in Android and answer questions that your customers are submitting, which is pretty cool. We actually reported about this a few weeks ago, and now Google full officially launched it. Google said, oh, sorry, there was a test done that Google, Google Fetch as Google Bot, the Fetch as Google tool in Google Search Console stops at 10,000 pixels. What Google really renders is way beyond that, but the Fetch as Google tool stops at 10,000 pixels. Um, Google is testing the AMP testing tool in the search results. Right, Google actually has the AMP testing page. So if you, do a, if you do a search for AMP page test, Google will actually give you the box right in the Google search results. And finally, Google voice recognition now supports up to 119 different languages. They added about 30 new languages this week, and they keep adding more and more, which is pretty impressive. In any event, thanks so much for listening to the Search Buzz video recap. My name again is Barry Schwartz, and this is Search News we covered over at the Search and Roundtable at seeroundtable.com over the past week. Everyone have a great weekend, and I'll see you guys next. Bye.